Now in this chapter we're going to talk about masking. And masking, like selections, is very important uh, to your workflow and for image editing. And also, masking goes hand in hand with selecting. Masking is a non-destructive way to remove or protect pixels that are on a layer. And there's a couple different ways to mask, and we're going to go through each one of them. But the most common way is to go ahead and create a layer mask. Now, in the Layers panel, on the bottom, we have Add Layer Mask. So we could go ahead and click that, and we'll see that another thumbnail pops up in our Layers panel with just white on it. And that is our Layer Mask. Now, you could go ahead and grab a brush, and you could just paint within this Layer Mask, and you'll see that the pixels will show up in your thumbnail. And I'm just going to mask out his head here for a second. And then we can Alt-click and see our mask. So black is zero, so black is going to be transparent, and white is going to be opaque. So if we click out of this, we can see that black is transparent. So our image is getting masked to this gross color green that I have going on here. And that's pretty much how that works for a layer mask. Pretty simple. And you could always jump in, and you could always run a filter on this, edit the layer mask, just like an image in Photoshop. And you can see that now it's blurry. Again, it's non-destructive. So if you right-click on this, we could say Disable Layer Mask, and it'll temporarily turn it off. Delete Layer Mask, or Apply It, which is going to permanently apply your layer mask to the pixels on your layer. We also have Add Mask to Selection, Subtract Mask, Intercept Mask, and Mask Options. And so we could display them in different ways throughout Photoshop. I'm going to delete this layer mask. And another way to create a layer mask is by using a shape. And you can see here, and what we did is create a vector mask. So now this is using vectors or paths. And if we jump into our paths here, you can see that we have our shape one vector mask. And we can mask things out that way as well. Now if we undo that, and if we have a path already, like we do here, select our path and hold down control or command, and you can see that our icon switches to add vector mask. And there we go. We have our vector mask. Delete that vector mask. We can also make a selection, go into our paths, click on our menu, and say make work path. And that will create a vector path of our selection. We could go ahead and select that. And we can either add a layer mask or we can go ahead and add a channel and create an alpha channel for that mask. And an alpha channel is a grayscale mask in which we can have multiple masks and multiple alpha channels in a file or an image file and we can load them up as selections as we need them. So we can go into layers, say if we create a new shape. We could select that, go into our channels, create a new channel, and store them up there and load them and select them when needed. We can delete that layer, but then it's always going to be in our channels. Let me invert that go into our layer and our channels, select it, 
and then we have that selection. Then we have a clipping mask. A clipping mask restricts a layer's pixels to a base layer, rather than everything that's underneath it, like a regular layer mask. So it creates a relationship to another layer. So I'm going to go ahead and create a shape layer. And I'm going to drag this under my dude. And then I'm going to right click and do create clipping mask. And so what that does is use the shape underneath it to drive the transparency or the mask of the layer it's related to. So if I hold down my controller command and I drag this around, you can see that this shape is isolating the pixels of my dude layer. Let me rename that. If we double click our layer and we look at our layer styles, you can see that they only affect the clipping mask area. Anything that draws outside of this area is not being affected. And then we have a quick mask, which is a soft selection where we can use a brush to paint a threshold or a color range of pixels and mask them that way. And this makes a temporary soft selection and a mask. So this could be very useful for um, doing very subtle masking changes. Now with CS5, um, some powerful masking tools came into play. The first one is Refine Edge, and then the second one is the Mask Panel. And we're going to take a look at those. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my Quick Selection tool, which is a color-based selection. And I'm going to go ahead and draw around my dude here. And it's going to grab this, these areas here, and that's probably good enough. I'm going to invert my selection, and then I'm going to make a layer mask. So if I all click on my layer, you can see that right there, there's my mask. And that did a pretty good job of retaining my line and masking out the background. Now I'm going to open up my mask panel and select my mask. And so we have density and we have feather and then there's some refine tools. Now the density basically is the overall transparency of your mask. Now you can see as I drag this lower, we're starting to see the green layer underneath come through. More and more. And then if we see our thumbnail here, you'll see that it's basically just fading out the mask. And then what Feather does, again, Feather is sort of a blur. So if we drag this, you can see that it's blurring the edge. And if we take a look at our mask by Alt-clicking, you'll see how this is working. We've got Sharp to Blurry. Now, I, it seems like I have some little bits and pieces in here. And I'm going to clean those really quick with my brush and just paint in those areas. And 
and then I'm going to open up my mask again. Now, zooming in looks pretty good, but I'm going to try and get it a little bit tighter. Now, to refine this, we have Mask Edge. And that brings up the Refine Mask dialog box. And in here, there's all these different ways to sort of control the pixels that are in your mask. So we have Edge Detection, which there's this Smart Radius. And you can see what's happening as we start dragging this. It's trying to do some solving here on where we want our edge and not doing a very good job there. So in this particular case, we don't really want this one. We do, however, want to smooth out some of this chunkiness here. So you can see when I drag it, my mask is starting to smooth out, but it's also losing some of the silhouette in the shape. So we don't want to do too much of that. Again, feather is blur, so as I drag that, my edge is becoming more blurry, so I don't want to use that. Now contrast, on the other hand, is going to tighten up those pixels and add more contrast. And we could check out our view mode here, which is, it'll show marching ants, our red overlay on black, on white, our actual mask on layers, and reveal layer. So let's look at the black on white. And you could see that contrast is kind of tightening up those pixels along the edge in the threshold. And then I'm going to look at the shift edge, but I'm going to switch this back to our regular layer. And then use the shift edge to bring that in a little bit more. And then my output, you could do selection, layer mask, new layer, new layer with layer mask, new document, and so on. So I'm just going to do layer mask. Now let's take a look at our mask here. And you can see that it did a pretty good job quickly and it's pretty tight. Now it's not 100% perfect and we could go in there with a brush and we could, f we could fix some of this stuff really quick. Might go in and just tighten this up a little bit in some of the different areas. Um, but for the most part it did a pretty good job. So again these are pretty powerful tools in Photoshop for your masking and for your selecting. And again, it was quick. And there we have our mask, our background color. And I'm going to get rid of my gross green. Let's just make it gray. I'm going to put a quick layer style on here with a gradient reverse blend it in and that's a little easier to look at